So yesterday, I allowed myself to feel a sense of relief, even elation, that Boeing Starliner finally came through. Yes, believe it or not, even though I've been harshly critical of this thing, and maybe harshly critical is a bit of an understatement, ever since I started my channel about 30 months ago when it had its first flawed unmanned test, I felt that if we could finally get this working, if Boeing could fix this problem and it stayed fixed, that would be a good sign for the future, not only of Boeing, not only for Starliner, but also for SLS and Artemis. And initially, things were looking very optimistic. Starliner, or rather the Atlas V that carried it, took off. The Atlas V carried it to the appropriate orbit without much of a hitch. Everything was looking great, and indeed, at the critical moment, when Starliner engaged its engines to carry it up to the appropriate orbit, the orbital insertion burn allegedly went very, very well, and everything was looking completely nominal for the flight. Until it wasn't. Hello YouTube, I'm the Angry Astronaut, and this is... Three, two, and liftoff. Starliner is headed back to space on the shoulders of Atlas, powered by a workforce dedicated to its success. So thus far, NASA has put on a brave face when it comes to the future of Starliner and the current mission, and one can hardly blame them. We need this capsule. We need a backup for Crew Dragon. We need another capsule that's capable of ISS reboost, especially given the wonky behavior of the Russians as of late. All of us know these things, but what we do not need is a capsule that's having problems that we have haven't figured out trying to dock with the ISS, and yet today, in a few hours, that's exactly what's going to be happening. Now, granted, these problems are not very serious, especially when one compares them to the anomalies that have happened with other key NASA missions, and they've been able to fight their way through those anomalies, so they should be able to correct this as well without any significant problems and get the mission completed. But here's the difference. Difference. Starliner is involving the safety of human beings, not human beings on the capsule, of course. This is an unmanned mission. However, it's going to be coming into direct contact with a very expensive station that has human beings on it with a malfunctioning propulsion system. And that's something that should be a source of concern for everybody. So yeah, Atlas V did its job as everybody knew that it would. It actually pushed Starliner a bit too far, and Centaur had to make some compensations in order to deliver Starliner to where it was supposed to be before it engaged its thrusters in order to deliver it into the proper orbit. What Boeing failed to mention in NASA as well, at least during the mission, is during that orbital insertion burn, the first of the OMAC thrusters, that is to say the orbital maneuvering and attitude control thrusters, failed when they tried to light it. Well, to be correct, it actually did light and then immediately failed. And then redundancy kicked in, a second thruster lit, and that shut down after 25 seconds, which it wasn't supposed to do. So a third thruster then took over for the rest of the burn. So this isn't the first problem that these thrusters have had. During hot fire testing that took place in June of 2018 at the White Sands Test Facility, in New Mexico. During the startup, all the engines responded nominally, but at about one and a half seconds, Boeing issued shutdown commands to the engines and several of the abort valves failed to fully close. Does that sound familiar? And it caused propellant to leak from the engines, but fortunately it didn't damage the test article. But that really doesn't matter because those particular engines have now been swapped out for an entirely new service module. So really, if there were problems on the initial engines, the original ones that were being tested here, that should have been corrected when they delivered a new service module. But guess what? 
Valve problems back then, Valve problems now, and now two failed thrusters out of the same grouping in the same doghouse is what they call it, located right here where the thrusters are, thrusters that are critical not only for the maneuvering of the capsule, but also for reboost of the ISS. Now, you're not going to need to use these thrusters during docking, so that's why they're proceeding with the maneuver to dock with the ISS today. However, given that you're already having unknown and unidentified problems with your propulsion system, do you really want to dock this thing with a space station that has human beings on board? I mean, we've already seen what happened when the Noika module experienced problems with its propulsion system when it docked with the station. Do we really want to risk a repeat of that? scenario. Now, I'm not saying that that's extremely likely, but given that two thrusters failed rather than just one, I mean, one engine can fail all the time during a mission, but given that you had two engines fail in quick succession, that suggests that it might be a larger problem with the overall propulsion system or that we might still have problems with the valves. Do we really want to bring something that has these unknown issues? issues into contact with the damn ISS. Is NASA so determined to make this thing work because of how desperately they need it that they're willing to start taking chances? I certainly hope not, but here's another scenario. Even if the rest of this test goes exactly according to plan, we are not going to be able to recover the service module and therefore the engines, the valves, or anything else associated with the proposal propulsion system, which means we're going to be relying exclusively on telemetry to do troubleshooting with the propulsion system with the next mission that's going to be carrying human beings, which means we may not be able to thoroughly identify what went wrong with these thrusters or if there might be a more significant problem with a future mission. Instead, we're going to be rolling the dice with human beings just as we did with Challenger and and Columbia. I really think that it's highly irresponsible to be taking those sorts of risks unless we can solidly identify what caused these problems and to make damn sure that it doesn't happen again with the next flight. But I am becoming increasingly concerned that given how much NASA needs Starliner, some corners might be cut, and that's when problems start to arise. In my opinion, the responsible thing to do is to troubleshoot the problem thoroughly before you bring Starliner anywhere near the ISS. Just parallel its course a few kilometers out for a while until you've had more time to troubleshoot the issue. But unfortunately, that's not what's happening. NASA is going for broke right now. Now, maybe the problem just isn't serious enough for any delays to be warranted, but given everything else that's happened with this capsule, given the fact that we've had 30 months to rectify all of these problems and half a billion dollars has been spent in the process, this thing should be able to stand on its head, split the atom while whistling the Star Spangled Banner to quote one of my favorite movies. It should be able to do anything and certainly not have any more problems with the valves or the propulsion system, but that's not what's happening and that has me deeply concerned. Please subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget the sunglasses. I've got pre-orders coming in fast and furious. It's right in the description as to how you can pre-order your set of sunglasses and maybe get close to being as angry as I am right now, although that may not be very good if you have a heart condition. And until Starliner does live up to its expectations, and I've got my doubts as to whether or not that's ever going to happen. But until it actually Actually does, or until NASA actually has the foresight to cancel it if it represents too great of a threat to our astronauts, I urge all of you to stay angry about space.